Big Ben or roast beef? Tolerance or a cup of tea? Stephen Hawking or Stephen Fry? Can we define what it really means to be British, the things that make us unique as a nation? When I watched the London 2012 opening ceremony, a celebration of the best of British, I was struck by how proud I was to be part of it, how much our eclectic bunch of nations meant to me, and the degree of respect that our country, our institutions, and our values have right across the world. In a minute, I will move on to telling you what I think that Britain's only fundamental value is the right to debate and the right to challenge our leaders, and why educational reform and a national conversation that silences dissent mean the state has a duty to promote it. Before that, let me introduce our opposition this evening. Speaking first will be the Honourable Member of Secretary's Committee, Mr Jake Herford. A leading light of the Oxford University Labour Club, I've been told it was the desire to follow in the footsteps of his heroes, such as David Cameron and William Haig, Thank you. Uh, that led Jake to study PPE at Oxford. And as someone who I consider a good friend, I've got my fingers crossed that tonight, unlike his party leader, he doesn't forget a massive chunk of his speech. <laughs> I've, I've got one fan. That's right. <laughs> Alongside the uh, honorable member from St. John's uh, is Max Hyde, uh, president of the teaching union the NUT. Ms Hyde has been a staunch opponent uh, of the coalition's education policy um, and has done some great work uh, on teachers' pay and working conditions. I was struggling for a comic line on this one, so in homage to the Honourable Mr Secretary and his penchant for puns, let's just say there'll be no place for the opposition to hide at the dispatch box this evening. <laughs> They, they get better, it's all right. <laughs> Finally, uh, let me introduce Daniel Bregman, chair of the union's debate selection committee and also voted Merton's most desirable man in the 2014 yearbook. Not much competition there then. <laughs> so, having introduced the opposition, uh, now let me move on to the motion before the House this evening. We, on the proposition, believe that the state has a duty to promote British values in our schools, in our institutions, and across society as a whole. But what does the phrase British values really mean? Because this phrase means so many different things to so many different people. Let me begin by telling you what I think British values are not. We're not talking about Godfrey Bloom's British values, that everyone who's not a white, middle-class man should bugger off back to Bongo Bongo land from whence they came. We're not talking about Nigel Farage's British values, that our school kids should salute the flag, own a pit bull, and share in a mutual dislike of the French. <laughs> We're not even talking about David Cameron's British values, that the white tie, Oxford, and Bullingdon elite should run this country and kick away the ladder from anyone who challenges them. <laughs> and let me go even further. Because everyone has their own definitions of individual liberty, of the rule of law, of freedom of expression, to say that these values are British and that the state should promote them is perhaps inherently contradictory. There are a million different definitions of what freedom means, of what the rule of law means, or even what democracy means. But which definition does the state choose to promote? Since any definition will naturally marginalize all those with a different, but perhaps equally legitimate, interpretation. In Britain, we recognize this, and that is why we do not have a written constitution. Therefore, there is only one true British value, the freedom to public debate and by extension, the freedom to challenge those in power. 
Now let me take you back through the history of this value. To the Magna Carta, the first charter to accept that the will of the king was not law, the first document to limit the power of the monarch, the foundation of the freedom of the individual against the arbitrary authority of the despot. Let's trace it back through the Reformation to the Civil War, where Britain became the first nation in the Western world to establish a true parliamentary democracy and created the charge of tyranny to convict Charles I. Let's trace it back through the Enlightenment, all the way to the foundation of the Labour movement, which for the first time gave real political voice to the workers in their struggle against oppression by the capitalists. And just look at what embracing debate and challenging those in power has given us. It's given us a democratic state in which our leaders are accountable, in which our people have a voice, in which decision-making is devolved, not despotic. It's given us the NHS, which Bevan campaigned for, which the establishment rejected, but which the people of Britain decided at the ballot box in 1945 was their right. And it's given us equality of men and women, which without the forum for debate, without the voice of the suffragettes being heard, and without our then leaders being challenged, would not be taken for granted here today, as it is not in so many countries across the world. And that is why, for me, the freedom to debate and to challenge our leaders is the only true British value. Why, for me, the things we come to associate with modern Britain exist today. Why, for me, the state has a duty to promote British values. But let me tell you, no thank you, our freedom, your freedom, to debate and to challenge is under attack. Firstly, from an education system which teaches children to conform, and secondly, from a public discussion which silences dissent. Let me talk you through the first attack, change to our education system which teaches our children to comply, not to contest. Reforms brought in by the recently reshuffled Michael Gove that train pupils that their individual opinions are not valid and that reading is only worthwhile if the text was written by a white British man. Reforms that make teaching, history teaching, a collection of dates and names rather than an analysis of multiple theories and opinions. Reforms that strip the curriculum of breadth and variety and regardless of gender, ethnicity, class or individuality, force all young people to relate to Michael Gove's middle-aged, upper-class, conservative values. No, thank you. <laughs> so how do we solve it? We promote British values. We defend the right to debate, the right to challenge the orthodoxy. And we overhaul the education system so that children are taught subjects from different perspectives, with different opinions, from different cultures. We create an education system in which our children take nothing for granted, in which they constantly question the orthodoxy, in which they are not afraid to investigate the orthodoxy. No, thank you. But that alone is not enough. Because there exists a second attack on our cherished British value, that of a public debate currently which silences dissent. Whether it be a government that tucks away in the background research that contradicts their headline policy, as has happened, no thank you, with Norman Baker's report on punitive sentences for drug criminals. Whether it be the tabloid press which vilifies anyone who challenges the public orthodoxy. Or whether it be the significant number of communities in this country who support practices such as female genital mutilation and through social pressure prevent victims from coming forward. We have a right and we have an obligation to pursue public policy that opens up cultures and communities that suppress debate. Whether it be the Catholic Church that covers up abuse, whether it be Muslim communities that condone forced marriages, or whether it be the elites in Westminster that simply look after their own. And we must challenge a rampant press 
that victimises those who do not conform to their blinkered view of the world. I'm not saying it is the responsibility of the state to interfere, but it is the responsibility of the state to equip our children with the ability to challenge, to, in to interrogate the social norm and the orthodoxy. Next. Ladies and gentlemen, let's be clear. The burden of proof tonight falls upon the opposition to convince you, the voting audience, that British values, as I have defined them, should not be promoted by the state. They must argue on our grounds that promotion of public debate constitutes harm and is of detriment to our society. Ladies and gentlemen, we fought the Second World War in order to allow people to disagree with their leaders. We overthrew our monarch to ensure that people could challenge the elite. We established institutions such as the Oxford Union so that debate and free speech would flourish. But this British value is under attack. It is under threat from the government's education policy and from the increasingly narrow-minded framing of public discussion. We must defend debate. We must enshrine the right to challenge. We must promote British values. I urge you to support this motion.